Have you ever had people ask you, what do you do? And you say, I'm a STEM teacher. And then they respond with, well, what is STEM? And you explain, well, it stands for science, technology, engineering, and math. And then after that, they say, well, how is that different than what they're already learning in the regular classroom? Have you had those conversations? I definitely have. In this episode, we are going to get a clear understanding of what STEM education means in the elementary setting, debunk common misconceptions, and build a strong foundation for your own classroom. According to the U.S. Department of Commerce, STEM jobs are expected to grow by 8.9% from 2014 through 2024, which we're so close to. In fact, STEM occupations earn 29% more than non-STEM jobs. While the numbers are there, we need more educators to better equip students for their futures. How can we prepare students for those futures? We need to understand clearly, even at the elementary school level, what STEM is and STEM isn't. Here are four major misconceptions about STEM education and how we can debunk those ideas. Misconception number one, STEM is a step-by-step -step craft. How many times have you seen some really awesome STEM projects and you see one of the solutions and then you see another solution and then another one and it looks exactly the same. Now, within STEM projects, some parts definitely do require step-by-step -step instructions, but if all of the solutions look the same, what creativity have you really inspired? Instead, STEM is project-based learning with multiple solutions based on curriculum standards. STEM is an awesome opportunity for students to look at the world in a new way. Think about the Wright brothers. What if they were creating what everybody else was creating? We may or may not have the airplanes that we have today. They kept thinking of new solutions and how to make it even better. And from there, we have all sorts of different airplane designs that fly in our sky. Elementary STEM, the standards are actually still really important. So when planning your STEM lessons, become really familiar with the NGSS standards, Common Core, and even the ISTE standards for students these definitely have a place in your classroom where you can design lessons where students can create endless possibilities and not just a step-by-step -step craft. Misconception number two, STEM is just isolated activities. Have you ever seen someone do a science experiment in their classroom and then they come back with, oh my gosh, we just did STEM. Maybe, but really STEM is the integration of science, technology, engineering, and math all together. Not one is more than the other. They are a mixture of all of those things. The getting started lessons that come with all of those STEM kits and robots and Lego education kits are awesome, and they're a great way to really focus on the rules and routines when using those materials in your classroom. But you can go further from there. So let's think about this sample lesson plan that you could possibly do in your classroom. This is based on the third grade NGSS standards that talk about life cycles, but you can also dive into other standards that you think this would apply to as well, or shift this in a way that makes sense for you. So let's say you have your students, you want them to code with the Dash robot or any type of robot. So day one, you learn how to use the robot and how to handle those appropriately in your classroom, how to connect to the app, how to take turns and share roles. That could be your day one lesson. Day two, have students take a little break from the robots and do a little bit of research about their favorite animal and their complete life cycle. A great tool that I like to use for research in the STEM setting is Epic Books. It is kid safe, it has videos, audiobooks, read to me, and awesome ebooks in one whole platform. So highly recommend. After students have done their research about their favorite animal, then they can create little cards that show a visual and labels of each stage of that life cycle. Day three, they bring in their life cycle cards or you have them saved. They have those cards and then they code their robot to code the different parts of the life cycle in order or even backwards or from different parts of it. 
Now, if students were researching, maybe by themselves in pairs or groups of three, they might have a whole collection of different animals to learn from. So not only are they looking at the life cycle that they researched about, but others that students have done in the class. Not only are you doing just robots, but you're integrating those standards and other elements of STEM into one whole lesson. If you're a little pressed for time or if you need some more support for specific students, you can find a growing collection of life cycle coding cards at naomimeredith.com slash TPT spring life cycle. Misconception number three, STEM is only coding. Coding is extremely important and there definitely is a place for it in the elementary STEM classroom. However, STEM isn't just coding and I oftentimes hear a lot of students at other schools or in other states or parents talk to me and say that their kid had STEM but they only did coding. STEM is so much more than that. Instead, STEM is hands-on, explorative, and creates problem-solving opportunities where coding can be one of many types of solutions. When you are planning out your year, make sure that there's a balance of robotics and coding, but also these two solutions should have equal weight compared to other solutions like Makerspace, Lego, and 3D printing. Not all kids will like coding, not all of them will like robotics, not all like make your space or 3D printing, but make sure to have a balance and give students a variety so that they are exploring STEM in multiple avenues. This can also help you when you're making purchasing decisions and really creating a balance of tools and materials you have in your classroom and to make sure again that you have a balance of coding, robotics, and building materials as well. And misconception number four, STEM is just playing with cool stuff. Okay. In a STEM setting, you definitely should have cool stuff. STEM is super cool, but it is way more than that. I often see other teachers or admins or even district personnel who come into the building, parents, and they are so mesmerized by the cool tools that we're using. They have the shiny object syndrome and they're like, oh, you just play with cool stuff all day. Yes, we do cool stuff, but there definitely needs to be a purpose of why you are using that cool stuff. What standards are integrated into your unit? What lesson objectives are students accomplishing? Are they practicing critical thinking, collaboration, creativity, problem solving? When you are planning your lessons, you definitely still need to ask yourself, what is the academic goal that is being used behind this tool? And if you can't really answer that, if you're really stretching that answer, that might be a better answer to would this tool be better used for an after school club? After school clubs are a great way to explore, experiment, and try something out before you have it in your actual classroom setting and using it with a small selection of kids. So you can definitely play around that way. Again, STEM shouldn't be boring, but you do have a purpose in mind when you're using these tools in your classroom. As a recap, you are going to definitely continue to develop your philosophy behind what STEM education is and what it means in the elementary classroom setting. In fact, I am sure that's a big reason why you are here listening or watching. Over on the show notes for this episode, naomimeredith.com slash episode two, you can see an infographic I put together to highlight these four major misconceptions and how to reframe what STEM education means in your elementary classroom. So let's recap what those four misconceptions are and how we can debunk those. Again, misconception number one was STEM is a step-by-step -step craft. Misconception two, STEM is just isolated activities. Misconception three, STEM is only coding. Misconception number four, STEM is just playing with cool stuff. Continue to build your work around these misconceptions and with what you're doing in the classroom, you're definitely going to help educate others when you get asked that question, what is STEM and what are you actually doing all day? You will build a foundation that is deeper for your students, more meaningful, and making those cross-curricular connections that they can apply to their classroom settings and in the real world.